Hey everybody, it's Jessica and welcome to the Ebony Escape. And today I'm doing a little bit of a different video. If you've seen my shorts, you know that my book, Guardians of Mass and Memory, has come in. So I have a copy <laughs> to hold in my hands. Um, but as a celebration of that and to get you to see what I've been working on, I wanted to read chapter one to you. So just going to go ahead and read that to you guys. So this is Guardians of Mass and Memory by Jessica Mack. And the dedication says, to all the black girls who have been othered and to all those seeking to find themselves. And here's the prologue. M, come here, Ebony, and take a seat. Yes, right in front of the wall of the pages. E, why are they shimmering and moving like that? M, well, Ebony, words cast spells, which is why we call it spelling. And you have cast many spells, unbeknownst to you, though. Spells that have leaked out of your imagination and twisted time, leading to so many variations of you on so many different worlds. E. So, what am I really? M. Hmm. There are many variations of names for someone like you. Technically, some may call you a griot, a storyteller for your ancestors, and technically, since the story on Alpha Jiri exists in the past in the timeline of the Wall of Pages, it kind of fits. And since all of this is of your making, you are the matriarch of the megaverse. All in all, you are a storyteller. E. Okay, so what story am I to tell? M. The Book of Wonders at the center of the wall will tell you that. It's going to give you what you need now, at this very moment. But once it starts, you won't want to stop. But fear not, for we will be here to help you. So go ahead and tell yourself the story. Ebony looked at the wall of pages and felt the world go black around her, as if she closed her eyes and then she was flying. She landed as if she were a fireball, but when Ebony collected herself, she was already waiting. M, I know this is your first time traveling, and I wanted to make sure that you made it here without too much of a fuss. Now, my darling, you've opened a portal to a universe that slightly intersects with this one. This universe, like all the others, is built upon a narrative question. Your reason for opening this one and parsing through its pages is unique. Now take my hand in this world of prose and verse will transport you through the rich and colorful plane of the megaverse. Part 1. Before. Chapter 1. Maleta. Contrary to popular opinion, the princess was in the tower because she wanted to be, and contrary to what her family said, she was not a butterfly refusing to fly out of her cocoon, but rather a butterfly that liked her tree. That was what Maleta thought, as she noted the castle guard walking on the streets below, seemingly annoyed. She was definitely out of place, as the castle's peaks were part of the distant skyline above the city, which meant that she had to prepare for the fair, to be around the other royals. Though Maleta ignored the guard, who had suspiciously familiar brown curls, and kept her in her periphery as she focused on her painting and the ocean in the distance. Maleta had gone to the ocean earlier at the edge of the city, unsure that she would be caught there. But thankfully, she was able to stare at the waves and sketch in peace. Sunlight streamed into the large window of her tower as Maleta's paint-stained brown fingers danced over her choice of brushes laid out on her palette. Her head danced back and forth, jostling the fluffy black twist that ran down her back and the mess of a bun atop her head. She needed more yellow, and she wasn't going to stop working on bringing the world and the canvas to life. It was a window that she merely needed to open, and she would happily do it in her quiet sanctuary. But before Maleda could get three strokes in, there was a rapid knock at the door. Princess, it's time to go. Maleda tilted her head up and huffed out a curse, but none of that reached response. Okay, I'm coming. Of course, it wasn't just one of the random guards. It had to be her. She rose from her stool, brushed her hands over her stained painting clothes, and breezed down the stairs barefoot, savoring her last bits of her own little world. She opened the door to find herself looking into crossed arms and then up into a caramel face with a quirked brow. Hi, Miriam, Maleta smiled, hoping it reached her eyes, and gestured for her to come into her haven. There were a few people that Maleta let into the tower, into her sacred space. She had no choice with Miriam, as she was her personal guard, 
but she was at least content that she trusted her. Miriam's arms remained crossed as she surveyed the space and turned back to Meleda, brows raised. What? Meleda asked innocently, palm showing. Why is it that on the day of the fair that you are here in the university, in your tower dorm, and not at the castle, getting ready? Miriam challenged, amusement in her caramel face. Would it help if I said that I didn't know it was today? Meleda questioned, messing with one of her twists. No, Miriam hummed as she sat down at one of the stools in the center of the room nearby another unfinished work, stretched out on a massive canvas. I'd say that's precisely the reason you got as far away from the castle as possible. All the rush and crowds of people required for the preparation. I get it. She only half got it. Miriam was spot on with the crowds, but Meleda also wanted to avoid the parade of it all and the formal means of how she would receive private and underhanded insults about being the second in line, second best, the other one. Sneaking out of the castle and avoiding her parents in the requests of her siblings to wade into the city traffic was a blissful and exciting escapade. Meleda didn't even risk visiting the stables to see her beloved and cheeky owl griffin, Bamidele, even though Meleda would get to see her until the fair ended. The whole purpose was to avoid alerting castle staff, which would alert Miriam. This was supposed to be a low-key kind of morning, but she did not have the expectations of a princess. She was just a quiet stranger on the street, absorbing the world around her. When the world became too much, everything too loud and her heart ratcheted, she would come to the tower, her own world, where she could watch her people below, but not be among them. Miriam usually seemed to let it slide, but Meleda suspected that she always followed her. Staring Miriam in the face in the middle of her tower proved her right. She was a hummingbird, an elegant busybody. Well, I've already packed, and I've brought my traveling clothes here, so I'll just change and we can get going. Miriam reached out an arm to stop her. Are you all right? Concern swam in Miriam's light brown eyes. No. Yes, I'm fine. Just give me a moment to change and we can get going. Miriam quirked a brow and the ghost of a smile faded from her face. You really think you've shaken me off the scent with that as your answer? I just had a dream last night. It's nothing. Nothing, you say? Yeah, I barely even remember it. I guess it made me wake up uneasy. Miriam's concern lightened but did not completely fade. Well, if you're feeling uneasy, perhaps you should visit an interpreter, a medium. Definitely not. I don't think I need to do that, Malada waved Miriam off and went upstairs to her bedroom to change. It'll be fine. Like you said, I get nervous, so my mind is probably playing tricks on me in my sleep. Miriam's mouth opened to argue further, but she was interrupted by a crystal gram gall. Malada thanked the Orisha for the intervention, and she dashed up the stairs into her room, shutting the door behind her. Moida stood against the door while the image of the girl turned away in the radiant yellow coat was at the edge of her mind, but she blinked it away and moved to her clothes that were laid out on the bed. So that was chapter one of Guardians of Mass and Memory. And if you're interested in reading chapter one for yourself, you can go to my Buy Me a Coffee page, buymeacoffee.com slash ebonyscape, and you can download chapter one for free. And if you're interested in buying Guardians of Masks and Memory, the book in full, you can go to Amazon.com or you can go to BarnesandNoble.com and you could buy the book there. Or you could buy the Kindle or the Nook version of the book there as well. But thank you guys for listening and I hope you have a good day. Keep creating, keep escaping. Bye. Thank you.